Good morning, Mr. Lombardi. How are you, my friend? I am doing great, thank you. Every time you read the Kubota tractor, I think of myself on a tractor, and I just never thought that would ever happen. So it's interesting <laughs> how I'm sponsored by a tractor company. It's fascinating. We should have had Brett Favre do this. We can ride his tractor on the <laughs> yeah. Kubota tractor. I mean, can you see an Italian on the tractor? I'm not sure about that. But, <laughs> but. We, uh, we're definitely trying to bridge the gap between the real-world stories that are unfolding at Penn State and the fun and games department. Your overview on what's happening at Penn State. You're in the area. I, I mean, I thought you guys have done an incredible job. I followed you, and I've, I've read all the stuff. You've engaged uh, this thing uh, and enlightened me, frankly, on a lot of the things that I was reading. And I, and I think, you know, living in this area, which is all Penn State country, you know, the news can be shifted so dramatically in favor of Penn State. But to me, I'm appalled by it. I think it's really it's really heartfelt, disgustingly, in terms of you send your kids to college, you want them to be around the right people, you're, you're educating them, and then you find out about this. To me, it really damages the whole institution completely. And, you know, I don't think there's any defense for it. I don't think there's any defense for it. And I think people that are saying, well, he didn't know or who didn't know, I think they're not really reading the they're not reading the document. They're not reading the grand jury. They're not reading anything because they're living in a cocoon. Mike, do you have the ability, living in Wilmington, Delaware, to get the sense of of the insulated entity that Penn State is to State College, Pennsylvania? It's like its own fiefdom, you know. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's it's an area where it, he controls it. I mean, it's just so so symbolic by the road it takes to get in there. There's never been a highway you can get in there. It takes you three and a half hours to get up there because you have to go on this two lane highway to get to town. So it's almost like you're going back in the time and clearly you are going back in the time when you go up there and they and and the kingdom and i was saying earlier i mean when joe paterno said he reported it to his superior officers i mean joe is essentially the governor of the state of pennsylvania right. he nobody works for joe i mean he joe works for no one you, and, you, and, and so who is a superior officer i mean he you can't be a janitor on campus at 84 years old they make you retire right. you know so Therefore, you know, when you're 84 years old coaching college, you don't, go to, you don't really go on the field. You're not visiting homes. You're really not doing what a head coach of the college should do, but you're the symbolic leader of the, of the team. To me, it means like you're getting what you want, and you have the power to get it. You work for a number of NFL teams, Mike, but I know you, you dealt with college evaluations, college coaches uh, in you know, a, a bunch of different places. What was your experience in dealing with Penn State? Did you have any contact with Sandusky? Uh, not with not with Sandusky because what happened when you went to Penn State is every linebacker that he coached was better than than Jack Ham, so there was really no sense in talking to him because you know once you get in those situations where this guy's better than Jack Ham, this guy's better than Jack Ham, what you're doing is you evaluate the evaluator, and you know that all he's trying to do is help the kids, so you try to stay away from it. Plus, you know Penn State wasn't a warm and fuzzy place to go visit; they would give you two weeks out of the whole whole fall to be able to go and evaluate and watch their tape. So it was a really difficult place. It was hard to get to, and then it was hard to do your job once you got there. But that's the way he set it up. He controls everything. And I think just how he did that lends you to believe how much control he had over the program and over everything that happened. And not turning this in, you know, not being able to stop the kid in the shower, stop, stop him in the shower. There's so many things you just read that where you just wring your hands and say, why wasn't somebody taking action? Sports Radio WEEI, now on 93.7 FM in Boston.